Ready to roll? Great. Here we go. Welcome to Telemetry Overlay. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to add flight metrics to aviation videos. So let's start by choosing the aviation preset. Then the program will ask for our video file. In this case, we've got four consecutive files from the same GoPro video. So we can select them and drop them into the program, which will join both the videos and any data the files contain. We can wait for the optimization process to have better playback within the program, or we can skip it if we are in a hurry. The final result will be exactly the same. Then the program will look for the telemetry data, but if it doesn't find it, we will see how to import external flight logs later. And these are the gauges the program has created for us based on our preset. The gauge selection would be different depending on your data source. As you can see, you can change the position of gauges, their size, the color of some of its parts, and each gauge has specific controls depending on the value it's showing. For example, with the airspeed indicator, you can change the speed ranges, the units, and things like that. Most gauges have a background control as well, so you can make them stand out just enough. Let's see what happens if we select a different preset than Aviation. We'll go to Patterns, and for example, the drone preset should display some useful information as well. We will delete the existing gauges and styles, and as you can see, the preset will also create some interesting gauges, like distance, speed, altitude, or camera settings, but in a very different style. The skydiving preset also shows very useful information, not only related to skydiving, but maybe also paragliding and other aerial sports. So my suggestion is to get inspired by the presets, but create your own layout with the data you prefer. Okay, let's go back to the default. And as you know, until now we're using the GoPro data. So for example, the speed is not airspeed, but ground speed. Our altitude is based on GPS data and not a barometer. And a way to improve this is by importing external data. Telemetry overlay is compatible with some Garmin instruments like the G1000, G300, G5, and G3X Touch. It also supports glider data in the IGC format and data from many other tracking devices and common formats. So now we will import data of the same flight from a Garmin instrument. The data is processed and now we get a chance to reapply our preset with the new data. And straight away we see some differences. We now have an attitude indicator and some additional data like battery, temperature, oil, and engine RPM. Let's see how that looks in movement. I want to thank Chad and other users that have shared their videos. You can find links to their channels in the video description. Also, some of the existing gauges now have more options. The altimeter, for example, can be based on barometric data. Airspeed is now actually indicated airspeed but you can still switch it to ground speed or true airspeed based on your instrument recordings. And we've got new options for heading as well. One very important thing when working with external data is synchronizing it to the video. In this case, because both the GoPro and the Garmin logger have compatible GPS timestamps, sync is done automatically. But in some cases, like if your camera doesn't have a GPS, you will have to sync data manually. Let's see one way to do that. So if we go to the sync telemetry tab, we can see that the source to sync, Garmin, is synced to the GoPro. But in many cases, you will find that it is synced to the video start. And that might be a problem if the video and the data do not start at the same time. So I suggest we go back to the Patterns tab and select the Sync Assistant option. 
This will create some gauges that help us find the sync point. And back in the sync telemetry tab, we will choose the offset slider. This is useful, especially if your data starts before the video. So let's try to find an easy to identify moment in the video. For example, takeoff. And now moving the slider to the left, we will try to find the same moment in the data. That is, right when altitude is about to pick up and speed has already increased. If this is correct, we should see an immediate reaction of the attitude indicator. It seems we're not quite there yet, so let's fine tune the offset second by second. This is looking better, let's check some in flight maneuver. And the attitude indicator seems quite close. Let's see if the speed is also in sync on the runway. And it still looks a bit delayed, so let's add one more second. That looks better, let's double check with takeoff. And that looks good. And be aware that there are other techniques for syncing, so check out the instructions manual and the other tutorials. Ok, so back to the aviation preset. Of course you don't need to rely exclusively on the presets, they are just suggestions. So let's go to add gauge, filter by aviation, and for example add the full engine RPM gauge. This can replace the minimal one. Or we could add an altitude graph for the duration of the project. Feel free to investigate and pick what's more meaningful for you. As you may know, some external data trackers like Garmin Instruments record many more values than we have seen so far. So we can go to Settings, Enable Read Extra Streams, and Re-import or Reinterpret the data. Then we can add custom gauges. Choose a visual style and select one column from the CSV. There's plenty of streams in the Garmin data as you can see, so let's pick the selected heading for example. And you could style this in very different ways. So once you're happy with your project, just go to the export section, and in most cases the default export settings will be fine. But you can find more information on what each one does in the instructions manual and in other tutorials. Exporting will take a while, so I'll leave you with some rendered footage. I hope this was useful, feel free to ask any questions, and see you in the next one.